Hey everybody, it's Patrick from the Pitch Deck. This is going to be round three for you guys. Uh, this is versus Dash. Dash has AB3 with Goliath Gauntlets. And starting out with Echo Pounder. I want to say that we're both 2 0. If I'm not mistaken, there was eight people. So there's enough for some people to go 2 0. But I didn't actually ask his um, his record. So I uh, this is the first win for the the first um, roll that I've won for the night. Uh, the other two I lost. So I'm able to go first this time. I know the word around Dynasty Dash for CC is he's a little scary right now. Um, she got a lot of new toys. Here, we're just going to overpitch. I think it was two Oasis for Spice, that's right. Um, not a great hand, but, uh... We have an Oasis for Spite in Arsenal. Then again, I guess he can't cycle his card if he wants to pitch for AB. I want to say that um, in here didn't get too much of uh, good luck for the banishes after we had this match. Um, I noticed that uh, he was getting a good bit of reds being banished. Not all of them, but a good bit. So uh, here we'll just go ahead and clear out the arsenal. And then he's got BIOS update, which is nice to see you go away as well. I think I have Cold Snapless Brothers in arm and then an Ice Bane, so I kind of want to keep this hand. And it's just three damage because the pounder went off the, uh, the first one. And I'm actually kind of curious why he didn't play the first one, which was the yellow one. Or it was actually blue for the first one, yellow for the second, but he could have pumped it higher for the um, the first attack and get more damage that way. But I guess plus two is plus two in a way. So he just finishes with pistol and I take it under 32. That or at least just a not attack action. I can just send three back. But it's nice that the uh, chill that we had turn one is doing some work here. Sending five damage to him, plus some tax for him. So this is coming first. You pay two or discard a card, and this is five. Any on damage, pay two or discard a card. I used to be a dash main in the very beginning when I started Flesh and Blood, and I actually did pretty good with her. Um, it was during the crew days, um, a little bit during the Everfest, so I was, I was still in it a lot, and then I transitioned to Wizard. She's still fun to play. She definitely did get some good uh, cards that allow you to uh, change the deck a different way, like different ways of playing. You can go Control, which is Pistol Fatigue, you can go Midrange. Or full boost uh, aggro. And then pay two or discard a card on damage. Here he's just discarding. Which I want to say he discarded a red, so he wants to hold on to some other things.
So we still have the cold snap in Arsenal. He doesn't have any resources that he can do. He'll just... So he has nothing here, so we'll just trade life, basically, at this point. And then he'll just freeze his arsenal because he has no resources to do anything. He just throws himself. Yeah, yeah, you're fine. That's right. I forgot. Um, here we'll just draw. Oasis off the top. I think we have a fate in there as well. I think I had like a weird hand and I did it a little bit slightly inefficiently, I think. Because I don't think I should have mooned here. Because now I have to... If I want to block this... I have to use Fate or the Oasis. That's what I would kind of want to use. I, think I, might have messed up. I can't remember the, the other two cards that are blue. Looks like it's a uh, frosting. So we, I think I remember it was a Blue Brothers in Arms, and the reason I want to keep it on top is that way I can end up having the Oasis in Arsenal, and from there I can speak with Blue. Oh wait, okay, so this is just, okay, for four damage, and then another two from Waning Moon, and then the Oasis into Arsenal. That way I'm giving a lot of damage, but still being defensive on my turn. Or I should say defensive on his turn, offensive on my turn. So I would have Oasis and Arsenal, and I do have my Tunic up. That way I can either choose Oasis or Brothers in Arms for a 4 damage prevention. So we're at 32 for him, 30 for me. Slightly hard to see his, uh, his phone there. I do draw an ice frame, but I can't remember if it was uh, usable and playable on my turn. Yeah, from the looks of it, we can do this. I think it was another red hail, but it's a blue ice bolt. We got T-Bone, which is pumped. It's a blue one, though, so it's going to be for three. And here we're just going to use this. We're not going to use the actual boots right now this early. <laughs> Definitely want to save it for the kill. And here I think he just I think he loads the pistol. Yeah, so he loads the pistol, breaks the combat chain. And it's a great way to actually use the oasis now. Because it covers both shots. Since he has two action points. Yes. 
I will Are you kidding? Tunic. Tunic. Like, it's either, it's like, if Mitchell's having a good half a day, oh, he's the Every time I fight a kid, oh, he's having a good half a day, Mitchell's yeah, pretty cool. And it's like, they just flip roles. Like, <laughs> <laughs> not that here we have a yellow i'm trying to decide what i want to reveal and i just want to give the reveal that i'm gonna potentially use that in my arsenal put that in my arsenal so that way he doesn't have the knowledge i think it was an ether hell in hand and i want to say it was red Goes away. I think we have one more charge on chill. It's out of the picture there, but we've only sent two ice veins. That's another discard. I'm actually kind of curious why some of the discards are happening. Maybe he's testing with it. Now he wants to just get the chamber out, which would just be one float, which is fine, I guess. He wants to set up a little bit more. I don't have the third counter on tunic yet i think that's why i wait and hold on to the ice bolt that way i can have like max damage with moon and ice bolt at the same time that's usually they go in hand in hand um there's not too many two costs in the deck like i had mentioned before i think in the last video it would be Channel Lake Frigid plus Ice Bolt. We just play the hail that we had earlier. Red Aether Hell is probably one of my favorite um, cards in the deck. Certain matchups, I take it out completely. I want to say it's just one matchup. I want to say I think it is Uji Bravo. But I think that might be incorrect to take it out. I have to revisit the side up, uh, the matchup for the sideboard. So here he's just doing a zero to 60 and i'm saying okay and then he just does a teclacore which is free reign for us to send some arcane nothing to protect it here i'm thinking okay i think it was uh, like weird ice veins and i just don't have the fuse and it's like it's really weird i think my hand is just awkward and i was thinking about taking it back but i eventually do deploy it because I th yeah it's i'm having to use a, um, a yellow ether ice vein just to pitch for it and i can't use a blue to play it with the moon so unfortunately we didn't get very full value off of that turn so you'll take the port first yeah i already oh. took the port yeah. oh okay I'm and then you did the tech There's not much I can do with my turn here. I'm thinking about pitching for Moon. Yeah, I feel like this is the best play. Oh, okay. So. 
we can fuse but i think it's red that's why it was a little weird the last counter And one of the channel lake in my arsenal, and that's why I was like, do I deploy this? I want to potentially use the, um, the red ice bolt and the yellow ether ice vein on my turn to fuse with the channel lake so I can keep the channel lake, but my arsenal is still going to be blocked. I can't play it. I want the channel lake in my arsenal if I can, but unfortunately it's not the way that I can do it. So this is just as good enough as any to disrupt his hand. He doesn't uh, have a full suite of cards, but he does have the Teclo core to help out with resources next turn. So it's either strip two cards or four resources plus some damage or the channel lake, but I chose this instead. And we end up having a Red Bolt in Arsenal. And that's why I couldn't play the uh, play the Channel Lake Frigid with that um, Ice Bolt or the Ice Bolt on his turn. I have a BIOS update. And that's the only boost he can do, which did not get the item, which is nice. We're checking ice veins. I think we've done three because the uh, chill is gone. So we have one of each left over. And we'll just go with these two. And I still have the red ice ball in hand, so I don't want to sink. I don't want to run into the chances of me doing anything that will hinder me from not being able to play the ice ball. To, unfortunately, he has to harpoon me, so I, I look at both both. He looks at both cards and it's the same thing, so. So I do get Oh, that's right. Okay. It's the same card, yeah. Okay. Uh, kind of a new card. I'm not used to it, so. But he hits me for two. I take two. Um, so we'll just keep the red ice bolt in Arsenal and I just play it. Might as well play it now. Um, stops go again. Here he gets two from the last counter from Eclacor. Now he's just gonna pump it plus five, and then now it's gonna be eleven. He does boost. I'm not sure why he would boost. Maybe he was trying to get off the bios update. Even though he wasn't going to gain go again, he was going to throw the chances of getting it, I guess. Because he does say he has um, only induction chambers. So here I'm thinking about just using the defense react, which is sink below. Because I was going to maybe two block it. Three block plus sink below, but I end up just doing a sink below. Because I still have the red ice bolt in the arsenal, and I believe that I want to try to get like max value on um, my turn because there is the fact that I do have scolding in my hand. Seven damage is seven damage, no matter how you slice it, really. Scolding for four and then moon for him um, on his turn for three, but it's still seven on my turn if I do ice bolt plus moon for two on my turn, and that still won't it still hinder some of the cards away from his hand. So here I'm just sinking. I get a channel lake, 
which is nice because I can actually put that in there for the arsenal once I've played it. I've played the Ice Bolt. So here we'll take the uh, seven. Kind of hurts, but uh, we come back. We come back. It's 20 to 13. And I think I wanted to maximize the value off this. That way I can do scolding, pay for it, amulet for whenever I need it. And again, scolding plus moon on their turn is seven still. Seven is going to be either way um, that I can slice it. Because I can still use tunic on my turn for moon for two. So it's still seven damage no matter what. And I can actually put the channel lake in my arsenal this turn. Though I cannot remember what I sank. The sink below. As long as I can manage to keep the life totals at the uh, marginal, um, if we're actually, if we're both at the same time, like even life totals, it'd be great. Here, he wants to load, so I'm going to snap the kind of like frigid. Definitely want to make sure to control some of these pistol shots he's probably wanting to do. Did I pitch amulet? Because I already got an amulet and it doesn't block. Um, I want to go ahead and get that out there so that way I can get a better card. Since I only have two more ice veins in my deck, I do have the brain freezes in my deck to allow me to uh, use the fuse triggers. I take out the um, blue ice veins for this matchup since it's automatically a B3 that they bring. Um, it's I know it's a blue that you're moving away, but it's you're not going to do much. So. Here he just wants to put it down since um, he can just pay for it and set up his board a little bit more. So now we have two chambers, which is nice that I have the, cha the channel light frigid on my turn. Or under my control, I should say. So here we're bringing in for four. I think I forget. <laughs> he says, no, it's fine. We're not in a tournament. He's a pretty nice guy. He'll just take the one and two from that. But six damage presented off the uh, Channel Lake Frigid is kind of nice. And he is paying two blues, which is a little rough. Um, I guess I guess you could say the play is to soak damage because you're not going to be able to use too much resources on your turn to be able to do much anything of Channel Lake in play. Yep, we have Red Ice Bolt coming in. I do remember the um, Joe Mao matchup, which is second round, and that was Jeremy, which is behind Benjamin there. He's in the gray shirt. I uh, had a Channel Lake Frigid out whenever he was in Joe Mao. But I played it on my turn to gain a little bit of traction. And then I was, so that way I have the one counter automatically. And when it came back to me, I was able to hail for four and then moon myself for two and then pay for it, which gave me two ice cards to keep it around. So sometimes you can moon yourself and don't be afraid to do that, especially in the mirror when you have 
uh, PJs. Basically, the Constellus tunic allows you to gain more counters, as in you want to play the long game. So here we have Zipper Hit. And it's gaining the buff from the Pounder that he put down. And again, we have this, but it shows Harpoon. A harpoon is being shown. But that way, it's not yet a zero cost, but we still have Amulet, so he has to pay it. So here he has a dilemma that he's probably thinking, I can discard it or I can put this underneath and then I can just pay the two because I have one left over. And he's also thinking about moon too because I can moon after the on his turn and he can soak up some of the damage. Yeah. He just goes ahead and pays it. I think I have two defense reactions if I'm not mistaken. And I think this is coming in for seven. Looks like a red. And that's why I was reaching for two. Yes, so seven. Sink a card. So I'm here matching three for three. I'm taking three and then he's taking three, which I'm okay with. Keeping life totals even as much as I can. And I think I will just um, peek with boss text. If I'm not mistaken, I had that in my hand and then keep the better card. Uh, it's okay. This is Blizzard. Also keep in mind in the mirror, you know, you can peek yourself if you have that or the mirror. It's not great if you don't want to use the, the um, no rune hood, which is fine. Completely fine. You don't have to um, have the no rune hood, but it is a little bit more effective in the mirror than peek. Here we have brain freeze. This is a little bit better since he has two cards. And they're both blues, so pounder and the zipper hit. No zero, no one cost. It's a little bit rough for dash whenever you play uh, brain freeze for this matchup because they're not necessarily playing all the zero costs. So you can take some of you can take one of them out if you need to. It is a blue block three, not ice, but it is blue block three, and it does give you information. People forget that sometimes. And here I want to send three at them, at him, because of the fact that I want to slow down some of the counters that he could put on his pistol or his um, induction changers as well. I know he's got two blues. I know he can soak it up. He can he can basically burn burn one blue, but he doesn't do that instead. I take the damage from the 0 to 60. Now he loads up. I think I have double Ice Eternal. So now he loaded his pistol. No, the pistol had it. He loaded the enchamber, the duction chamber. So that's what he was doing. And I was thinking, I maybe I could toss out the ice eternal now, maybe with my boots and finish it off. But I thought, nah, I'm okay now. I'll just use this for two, potentially block with a card in my hand, maybe keep peek around for my turn so I can peek and necessarily use it for blocking as well. Yeah. 
And here he shoots and he forgets to load the induction chambers of the two floating. So he's like, yep, that was, I should have loaded the two chambers. So there goes two resources. He said he's still learning dash at this point. And here we want to peek with ice eternal. Well, here we'll do zero to six e boost. This one is coming in for five, which is presenting lethal. And here we will do that. He does no arsenal. It's cold snap. Doesn't go for it. Which we draw a red bolt. I'm thinking about bringing in my boots, but I double check. I'm thinking here, I'm thinking maybe I can use it on this turn. And that's the armor that I'm trying to decide. So this is coming in for five. I'm at four and the equipment and the block could come in for peak. Peak can block and satisfy the, the T-bone requirement. That goes away, and this will keep me at one. Here, I'll block. I'm potentially going to keep my boots because if they're on the chain, that I can't use them. And I've already used my gauntlets, and the tunic would kill me still. And here, he wants to use his chest, and Jeremy in the back is like, no. What are you doing? Um, I have a window of opportunity before any of the resources come through and I'm able to moon here and then pay for five. Can't overextend when you're at that low life. Well, the problem was is I had a four red card game. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. It would have been better to blow up that you still have my moon. And here we actually think that um, he overextended, but um, I had a blue... Ice Bolt as well, and there was another Red Ether Ice Vein. I could have killed him on his turn if he just would have kept it and maybe bluffed. And then, because I have this, I would have put this in Arsenal and then have a better... Because I would, I mean, I would have been... Yeah, yeah, Ice Vein on my on his, on the next turn. I would have had that in my hand for the next turn. Dead either way. Yeah, I'd have gone to two on you. So I think either way, he would have been dead. <laughs> if he would have just like maybe ended his turn from there and then bluffed. Alright guys, thanks for the watching. Um, I'm going to get some more matches next week because it's going to be raffle night for the LGS. I'm definitely coming in for that. I might change up the heroes. So if you want to stay for that next tune, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks guys. Red, red, pay for my turn. And then he goes... Do I want to do my chest for my swords? Oh wait, no, I'll just pay yellow. I'm like, oh, okay.